Unit 4, Lesson 8, Part 6, the exciting conclusion of factoring. The moment you've all been waiting for. At this point, you are now officially done with factoring in terms of all the different methods. So, today I am talking about factoring algebraic expressions completely. Okay? Uh, and this is something that has been hinted about uh, throughout this time during, this during uh, these uh, six videos. All right, that sometimes you factor and there's yet still more factoring to do okay so we're going to begin with something called negative factoring or factor out a negative one okay and it's something that once again we've come across already and it was briefly explained but now you'll get a little bit more detail okay first thing we do when it comes to factoring always number one is try to find a GCF okay in this particular case there's no GCF so the next thing we want to do, all right, is count the number of terms. Okay, when we count the terms, we either end up with a binomial, a trinomial, or something with four, all right, terms. If it's a binomial, okay, the only way we have of factoring that, besides for GCF, is difference of squares, which I'm just going to abbreviate as DOS. If it's a trinomial, Okay, there's actually a bunch of different ways of factoring that. All right, it could be uh, what we consider an easy trinomial or an AC trinomial. It could even be a perfect square trinomial. All right, if there are four terms, then we do grouping. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go. So I look at the first problem. There's no GCF. All right, so I'm thinking this is going to be a trinomial. All right, one, two, three. So I'm using one of these three methods. All right. In order for us to do this factoring, however, I have to take care of that negative one out in front. Okay. We always want our lead coefficient to be positive when we factor. All right. So what I'm going to do is factor out a negative one. And all that's going to do is change every sign. Like that. Okay. Notice this is now positive. This is negative, And this is positive. So every sign changed. Now we see that we have an easy trinomial. All right, so I'm going to do an MA chart. Some of you are so good at this now, you don't even need it. All right, but I'm going to show it. We need to get the positive 3 in multiplication and negative 4 in addition. That's going to be negative 3 and negative 1. Okay, so we have negative 3, negative 1, with a negative 1 in front. All right, and that is your answer. Okay, it's important to understand that when you do factor out a GCF, you include that with your answer. All right, it doesn't disappear from the problem. All right, so let's take a look at B. Again, we're working on factoring out negative ones. And once again, we notice, first of all, there's no GCF. Okay, we count the number of terms, we have a binomial. So I'm thinking difference of squares. But again, I have a lead coefficient that's negative right there. So I'm going to take care of that first by taking a negative 1 out. That's going to give me 25 x squared minus 1. Okay. Again, there's no GCF. I'm thinking, is this possibly difference of squares? Well, 25 is a perfect square, and so is x. And 1 is a perfect square. So we just showed that it is a difference of two squares. Remember, difference means subtraction, and then both of these need to be perfect squares. So my formula, or my uh, shortcut, is to say, a minus B, A plus B. Put your parentheses in, drop your GCF. There's your answer. All right, a couple U tries for you, you'll get in class tomorrow. Let's move on. Okay, there's other things that can happen. All right, for example, you may have a GCF, all right, and then have to do other additional factors. Okay, so as always, we always have to think, okay, do GCF first. However, there's always that other idea that you have to be in descending order first. So I'm going to take an extra step and rewrite this problem so that I'm in descending order. Remember, descending order is based on exponents, two, invisible one, and then nothing. All right. So again, we do GCF first. I see that three goes into all of these, so I'm going to pull a three out. That's going to give me x squared plus 7x plus 12. All right. 
Now from here, I examine the inside, okay, and what I have is an easy trinomial. So my MA chart, I need to get to positive 12 in multiplication and positive 7 through addition, all right. Because this is an easy trinomial, I don't have to do any additional work once I find my factors at work. I just plug it in, and don't forget the GCF that you factored out earlier. All right. Now, the confusing thing with this is sometimes people look at this problem and say, oh, this is going to be a hard trinomial, and I'm going to have to do AC factoring. Okay. If you were to do AC factoring, you would end up with an answer all right, that would be in binomials with nothing in front, but it wouldn't be completely factored. We always, always, always start with the GCF. All right, it's the easiest term of form of factoring. It's the first one you learned. All right, it should always be what you look for first. All right, so moving on to B. Again, we see that we could pull out a GCF first. Okay, also notice that my lead coefficient is negative. So when I look at these two numbers, I notice six goes into them, but I also know my lead's negative, so I'm going to take out a negative six. That's going to give me x squared minus 9. Now, I'm doing this GCF factoring, and I'm not showing a step at this point. I just want to remind you, in case you are struggling, that when you find the GCF, what you're doing is dividing by that GCF to get the inner pieces. So negative 6 divided by negative 6 is positive 1. All right, x squared. And then positive 54 divided by negative 6 is negative 9. All right, so... Once again, after you do GCF factoring, you're going to look at your remaining piece on the inside and see, can I factor this more? And again, this is something you've seen in previous examples because it's hard to avoid sometimes. It just comes up. All right, so again, I have a binomial. If I go back to that list up here, my only choice for binomials is GCF and difference of squares. I've already done the GCF. Now i got to check for difference of squares. And once again, we have a difference of two squares. So I take a minus b, a plus b, put my parentheses in, and don't forget to drop my GCF. Okay, that GCF, once again, is a factor and needs to be part of your answer. All right, a few more U tries. And moving on to example three, you'll notice we have a little bit more to go here. Okay. Notice it says factoring with exponents bigger than two. We've done a lot this uh, past couple weeks here on seeing, you know, x squared, x zero, or x squared, and then nothing, all right, depending on what kind of problem it was. All right, let's take a look at this one. All right. When I look at A, again, the first thing I'm going to notice is not that I have a lead coefficient that's negative, because that's really not true in this problem. I'm going to notice that I'm not in order based on my exponents. So the first thing I'm going to do is put it in order. Now you're going to notice that my lead coefficient is actually not negative, it's positive 1. Okay? Now look for a GCF. I have x to the fourth, x third, x squared. Like we said in the very first video, when x is present in everything, that means it's common. We always take the smallest of the exponents. So I'm going to take x squared there. All right. And then again, might as well show this. I'm dividing each piece by x squared. So what that's going to do for me is go back to unit 3 rules that tell me when I divide with the same base, keep the base, subtract the exponents. Coefficients you just divide, so 8 divided by an invisible 1 is 8. Once again, same base, keep the base, subtract the exponents, 3 minus 2 is 1, don't need to write it. And then over here, same size is going to cancel out, and we get that. All right, now again, at this point, and from here on out with factoring, now that you know how to do this, all right, we need to then check our additional factoring to see if we could do anything else. And once again, we have an easy trinomial, all right, which, let me put this up over here. I need to get to positive 7 and negative 8. Okay, again, hopefully at this point we're really good at this. If not, all right, you definitely need to get some additional help. Okay, 
we need to get uh, use negative 7 and negative 1 as our factors. x minus 7, x minus 1, and don't forget the GCF that we took out earlier. All right. A couple more here. Looking at this problem, all right, there is no GCF. All right. It's a binomial. My only other option here is difference of squares. So when I think difference of squares, I think, how can I rewrite this as a square root? Square root of uh, 16 is 4. Do that in green. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. Keep in mind that rule that we learned in Unit 3, that when you have an exponent outside, you're multiplying these. So 2 times 2 is 4 for the exponent. All right, there's an invisible 1 here. Two, 1 times 2 is 2, so that's 4 squared. All right. 9 is easy. We know 9 is 3 squared. All right. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and do a minus b, a plus b. All right. Once again, after I factor, I'm going to check my factors to see if I can factor further. All right. For example, inside here, I see that I have a binomial. I already know there's no GCF because I would have taken care of that already. All right, so I'm going to think, is this a difference of squares? Well, 4x is a perfect square, 4x squared. All right, I can rewrite that as 2x. I have a subtraction here. However, 3 is not a perfect square. I have no clue what the square root of 3 is. So I know this is not difference of squares. Coming over here, there's your 3 again, but also this one's a plus. Certainly can't do it because there's no such thing as sum of squares factoring. There's only difference of squares. All right. So let's move on to the last one that's uh, factored. Okay, that's all you could do in this case. All right, not everything is double factorable or multiple factoring. Okay, uh, sometimes when kids see this for the first time, they think, well, I got to go ahead and start double factoring everything. If you have a reason to factor it, factor it. If not, leave it alone. All right, so let's take a look at C. All right, the last one in this particular set. All right, again, I see this x to the fourth. And as we just discussed, x to the fourth is going to be rewritten as x squared squared. One is a perfect square. All right, because one times one is one, so I'm going to write it like that. And now I have x squared minus one, x squared plus one. All right, just like in the previous example, I'm going to check my new factors to see if I can factor further. Let's take care of the easy one. This one, all right, over here, is a binomial, and it has a plus sign. The only thing I could do there is GCF factoring, which we already said we couldn't do in the beginning. So this piece is factored. However, this piece is a difference of squares, because that is x getting squared, and that's 1 getting squared. So we would have to go further on this one and say, our final answer is going to be x minus 1, x plus 1, and then x squared plus 1. So what's happening here is this is getting factored by difference of squares, and that could not, so it just comes along for the right. All right, so now we have three binomial factors as our answer. Think about multiple choice questions and this problem. Okay, remember, multiple choice questions can have multiple answers. So if you were asked to do this, and it says what are the possible factors, there's possibly three answers that you could be selecting there. All right, so be careful. Make sure you factor all the way. All right, some U tries that we'll go over in class tomorrow. And finally, our last example of dealing with factoring deals with grouping and more. Okay, we know once again, we talked about it on the front page. The first thing we should always do is pull out a GCF. Okay, I have an A here, I have an A here, I have an A here, but I don't have an A here. So there's no GCF. All right, the next thing is count the number of terms. Obviously, I have four terms here. All right, so I'm going to factor by grouping. I group the first two. I group the last two, including the sign. In the first two, I have an a squared that's common. All right, and again, I'm going to divide just the front half by a squared. That'll give me an a plus 1. In the second one, I have uh, negative 64. 
So I'm going to pull out negative 64. Remember when my lead coefficient is negative, I take out a negative. All right, and then that's going to give me divide by negative 64, I get a plus 1. Okay, and like we learned before, all right, if this is the same, we're happy. So we're going to do a plus 1, and then a squared minus 64. Okay, now obviously this whole entire section is about double checking to make sure we're done. When I look at this factor right here, that's a difference of two squares. Okay, because, and I'm going to write this above because I'm running out of space here. This is a getting squared. This is 8 getting squared, and it's a difference. So my final step is to do a minus 8, a plus 8, and then my a plus 1. So once again, my difference in squares got split and factored, and then that was left alone. So there's my final answer. Three, once again, we end up with three binomials in this particular section. All right, so again, you'll notice that there was really nothing new today. All the methods of factoring have already been taught to you, so it's really just a matter of making sure, am I factored completely? So once you factor something, go back and look at your factors that you've created and double-check those, okay? Uh, keep in mind, you need to be filling this information out okay uh, and asking questions in class if you're struggling alright it's a big deal alright take responsibility for your learning and you will do well we'll see you tomorrow in class